Dojin Vak. Uh, hello. Hello, Kasha. Hello, everyone. Hi. Thank you for joining us. I know you're joining us today from, from Korea, actually. I know it's late. Yep. It's not as late as it would have been <laughs> back at home, <laughs> but, uh, but still late. So thank you so much for joining us. And Dojin will be telling us about high throughput roll to roll research for high performance fabricated organic and uh, perovskite PVs. Um, so the stage is yours. Yeah, today I'd like to talk about roll to roll printed PV the, with a the focus on new research method. But before I talk about the roll to roll printed PV, I'd like to quickly introduce the roll to roll process for those who are not familiar with the roll to roll process. Familiar with this process, you can think about cassette tape. So it works almost like a cassette tape, but then instead of reading magnetic signal, we just add layers. If you see the video here, so this is a typical roll to roll coating. So when we fabricate the OPB, we do this process a few times to put multiple functional layers. After doing few the the roll to roll coating, then we do the roll to roll screen printing to make electrode. So now like uh, the other functional layers, we need some 2D patterns. So we print the electrode, then we get the solar cell the, like this. This is a fully printed uh, the OPV module. So I'm from CSRO, so the CSRO is a national science agency, not a company. So, so we do the research like normal academic groups. So with the publication also make a small solar cells, but we also fabricate reasonably large scale, the, the printed solar cell, and then also do some sort of prototyping as well to explore commercialization opportunities. But the problem I have is the lack in the laptop fab translation. So this black over here the, shows the nice progress of research cells of OPV. So recently the community the, achieved the, more than 19% the efficiency from the laboratory cells. But if you see the progress of roll to roll printed cell, efficiency has always been much lower than the spin coated research cells. I mean, currently the gap is almost like uh, the, the 10%, like almost half of the best research cell. But another problem is also the lack. So this is uh, the rapid rate of efficiency was uh, originated from the material discovery, so non-fluorine acceptors. But uh, that was in the first high performance non-fluorine acceptor was uh, appeared around 2015. But the, the first time that one was used in Rotor was a few years later. So it takes always quite a long time to translate new technology from the lab to the large scale production. So the, the issue is that you know, the rapid progress so usually made by the majority of the research community using spin coating. So, so whether you develop a new process or you test your new material, things usually done by this non-scalable way, then the, the quite small number of rural to -roll people translate that the, the material or process to upscale devices. But issue is there are lots of challenges. Like the, I mean, the roll to process, we are kind of a time for, we get the limited time because the web is always moving. And then we have a temperature the limitation, also have different dry kinetic and then harsher environment. And then some materials even don't work for printing. But the, before even that problem, so, so we need to upscale material first, even to try all these things. But usually when we get new material, the developed by chemist, so we always a very small material. So even even we don't get chance to try for upscaling. So we really have to screen material and then identify printer material, then upscale. And it's quite a long process. Basically, it doesn't work. So I think we should stop doing this roll through the lab to pad translation. So what I propose today is actually going opposite. So instead of upscaling device, we should downscale the, the printers. And then we do research like a factory. So then 
as long as we used the this uh, the upscalable method, so role to compatible method, so in our research, then we can easily translate the research outcome.